started. Uh, thanks for for uh, for doing this interview. I know we've been talking about this for quite a while about getting yeah. this done. It's uh, <laughs> just hooking up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you know takes a while sometimes to to get these things done. But uh, now that the summer's over, I'm hoping to get more interviews uh, recorded and released because I know everyone's busy during the summer, so I don't really push to to get too many of them done. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so we are recording. So why don't we usually with the the interviews, I just like to start with, you know, from your beginning, how you, you know, how and why you got started with keto. And uh, then we can basically go from there. All righty. Well, I started keto 2020 in September. I had prior to that, I want to say in 2007, I had gastric bypass surgery and I was almost 300 pounds, if not more at that point. And there was heart disease in my family, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, type two diabetes. It was like, I was trying to run away from all that stuff. And at the time, that's the, I mean, I had tried dieting, I had the roller coaster, you know, you lose some, you gain t twice as much for so many years ongoing. And I talked to my husband and we had just been married a few years at that point. And I said, I really need to do this. And he's like, you don't need to do it for me. I, I love you the way you are. And I said, but I don't love myself. I need to do something and I need to better my health, you know? So when you go through all this to for gastric bypass, you go through so many support meetings and testing and and I had the surgery and a couple years later, well, I had lost like 90 pounds really quick. And then they tell you to eat the whole grain pastas and the brown rices and the sweet potatoes instead of all the white stuff and the, you know, the darker breads instead of the white breads. Mm -hmm. Well, I did all that. And the weight started creeping back on over the years. But a couple of years after I had had the surgery, I found out that I was getting hypoglycemic episodes. And I tried to put the two together and I found out if I ate too many carbs, I was kicking out so much insulin that it was dropping my blood sugars sometimes in the 40s, hmm. which was terrifying. Mm -hmm. And my husband being a type 1 diabetic, I knew the signs when he would go into a hypoglycemic area, you know, because he went through the highs and lows on that stuff. So I bought myself a meter and I kept checking and I started reading labels religiously and there, and I love sugar, cereal, sugar. I loved sugar, but I love cereal. And I could not find any cereal on the market that was low in carbs. Mm -hmm. None. It was crazy. And that included oatmeal. So I knew then, you know, that that stuff wasn't good. But I still continued with the sad way of eating. And until... Yeah, my sister had researched, my sister Debbie, she had researched diets for her daughter or different ways of eating because her daughter had just been diagnosed with fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic. And so she started putting in our, our sister chat that we have going, we have two other sisters also, about what she was doing and do we want to do it with her? For like three months, all I kept hearing was all these little things about keto and keto. And I said, all right. I looked at my husband. I said, I'm just going to do this for nothing else to shut her up. <laughs> <laughs> so in September 2020, I was weighing almost 270. And, you know, my blood work, blood work was always pretty good, you know, and I, I felt okay. However, I had had two knee replacements by then and was having a lot of back pain from arthritis and all this stuff. Well, 
within 23 months of starting keto, and I stayed really strict keto. I stayed under that 20 total carbs for the longest time. I didn't eat any of the keto um, sweet stuff mm -hmm. for at least six months, I want to think. And I, within 23 months, I had lost 100 pounds. And I felt great. When I had gone to my doctor shortly after starting keto, I asked him to do an A1C check because I don't remember ever having one done, even being 300 pounds mm -hmm. back in the you know earlier year adult years. So he did one and I told him what I was doing as far as I started keto and all that. And he was OK, whatever. Well, when the results came back of the blood work of the A1C check, it was 5.8. Now. Yeah. I said I had always had decent blood work. You know, that had never been checked, but everything else was pretty decent. Regardless of how much I weighed or what I was eating at the, you know, at that time. So when the A1C came back 5.8, I was worried because now I'm thinking, all right, because I'm hearing Dr. Barry and I'm listening to all these different people on YouTube and, and faithfully watching different videos. And I questioned my doctor. He said, I'm not worried about you. He said, you've already dropped 20 pounds just since you started. You're doing what's right. Just mm -hmm. keep it up. Uh, last I had checked, that checked, it's 5.0. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm like, yes, I'm mm -hmm. good. So yeah, I'm, you know, I feel so much better than I ever did, even in my 30s and 40s. You know, I'm 65 years old. I had started bowling when I was nine years old. In my 40s, I had to stop because I was having knee issues and back issues, and it just wasn't worth it for me. 20 years later, I'm back to bowling, and I feel great about it. We bowl twice a week, or I do. My husband and I bowl in a senior league on Mondays. But I pick up another league and we may be picking up another one. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's fun and it, and it is exercise and it, it's just, it's great to be able to do something that I did when I was younger that I enjoyed that I couldn't do prior to losing this weight for a number of years. So, but yeah, I, with keto, I mean, right now, the way I eat is mostly meat. But I do enjoy keto chow, and I do have Chalk Zero occasionally, which I need to mix for a while. But, um, yeah, I, I feel really good. You know, in 2017, before I started keto, I had, well, in 2014, I had my first knee replaced. In 2017, I had to have the second one done. And I was miserable. It got infected. I wound up with two and two bacteria growing. One was a staph infection and one was something else. I was on IV antibiotics for six weeks and then oral antibiotics for eight months after that. And we all know antibiotics could tear you apart. Mm -hmm. That was so horrible. And I was like, oh my word, why, you know, now, knowing what I know now and what I've done to this point, I wonder if I could have avoided those knee surgeries. Mm. You know, I, I was pretty much bone on bone, so I don't think anything could have been different. But you just never know. You know, there. this has improved so many things for so many people. Right. You know, could I have avoided them? Mm-hmm. I, you know, you just never know. But yeah. if you don't try, you won't know. Sure. Yeah. And it's amazing how things like this and, you know, I've heard this, uh, heard it sort of go this way a lot of times is that we all, it seems like most of us start for the same reason. You know, we know we need to lose that weight and, you know, uh, get healthier, but then it slowly turns into hey, I've done this, but now exactly like you say, oh, well, I can do all these things again that I haven't been able to do for years. And, you 
you know, you're feeling better and your all the aches and pains are gone. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the whole weight loss part of it shifts to more quality of life, uh, overall. Uh, right. It, it, you know, especially as you get older, mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't start this until I was 62, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, can we do this when we're older? Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I did it yeah. and I'm still doing it. I've maintained this for over a year now. Mm -hmm. I still like to lose a little more, but I keep saying if I don't, I know I am way healthier than I used to be. Sure. I got off. I was on blood pressure medicine from the time I was a teenager until probably about a year ago. I don't have to take it anymore. Mm -hmm. We're talking 50 years on blood pressure medicines that you don't have to take. The last mm -hmm. time I had my blood pressure checked when I went to the doctor. Now, mind you, I had an infection and all this stuff going on. My blood pressure was 110 over 70. Mm. And I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That was like, that was a true win. Because typically when you're sick, your blood pressure is going to be elevated anyway. Mm -hmm. A little bit. But yeah, that was, that was just. That was a total win. Yeah. And yeah. I was talking to my sister the other day and another that I haven't talked about on my channel yet. I, I never even thought about it. But when I was recuperating from the knee surgeries, we had a very small house. We had one bathroom in the house. Our bedroom was upstairs. The bathroom was on the first floor. So I slept in a recliner mm. for years from one knee surgery to the other to avoid the steps. Because that was, and you know, trying to, when I, you know, when you have to use the restroom <laughs> and you got a bad knee, you don't want to climb stairs because you're not going to make it. <laughs> right. So anyhow, um, I had developed bursitis in both of my sides from sleeping in a recliner mm -hmm. in that position for so many years. I could not lay down on either one of my sides without excruciating pain. It's gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's totally gone. And I sleep so much better because that was, I was a side sleeper. So, and when I couldn't do that, that was hard, you mm -hmm. know, trying to get some good sleep, which we all know is very important. Yeah. So that was, that was something, like I said, I was talking to her the other day. She I said, you know, I said, here's another non-scale victory that I haven't even thought of. Mm-hmm. You know, putting the two together because, you know, I they sent me to physical therapy for it. So I'm sure that helped. But this has totally taken that pain away. And it's like, yes, because that was big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, healing your body is it's amazing how, you know, and I, I unfortunately, I, well, I'm sure you see it all the time, too, is a lot of people just seem to accept it, the the pain and these nagging things that come with age you know they they think all oh, this is just part of getting old when realistically right. it's just part of not sort of healing your body properly and i you know thankfully i was able to recognize that i needed to do something a bit earlier i was 49 when i started keto mm -hmm. And I didn't really have any major issues, but I had, you know, I had back pain and knee pain and, and stuff like that quite often. And, you know, it was get to right. the point where I'd hurt my back or I'd strained my back and it would take two weeks to, to start to feel better. Right. Now, if I overexert myself, you know, I, I can cause pain still, but it only takes, you know, a day or two and it's all gone. Right. Well, that's like when I started bowling when I went back to bowling, <laughs> one of the first couple of weeks, I mean, I felt a strain across my shoulder, mm -hmm. right below my shoulder in the back. And I knew, I just swore I pulled something. Mm -hmm. But it healed pretty quickly considering, you know, how it felt when it happened. Sure. And I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I'm like, I am hurting so bad. And my husband would massage my back and, and I'm like, this ain't helping. I had a heating pad on my back and I'm like, you know, but 
yeah, it, it's totally worked itself out because I wasn't going to give up. You know, my doctor's like, well, you may not be able to bowl. I said, I am going to bowl regardless. Mm-hmm. I'll figure it out. I'll put a patch on there, whatever I got to do, but I'm not going to stop because that's just giving up and you, you can't do that. Right. You know, so it was probably a couple weeks of pain because I kept pushing it. Mm-hmm. but it's gone and mm-hmm. you know i would take some ibuprofen because i knew it was inflamed it was it was bad but that helped and it's all good now so you know and i told the doctor i did not stop mm-hmm. <laughs> so they sent me to physical therapy and and i'm like and i go in to see this physical therapist and he said why are you here you're not mm-hmm. in any pain i said because it went away they yeah. sent me anyway you know it was like it was a one-time visit and you know because my doctor had sent me to ortho and ortho said well this would do you some good to see what home exercises you can do and they'll walk you through that which is the only re- excuse me the only reason i had to go mm-hmm. is just to get that you know this is what you can do at home so if it happens again you know this is what you can do so it was it was okay it was right i think i was like well, you're not even in any pain, <laughs> so you're all good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think if I had given up, it would still be hurting. You know, because sure. then then your whole demeanor, your whole, you know, the 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 whole mindset goes mm-hmm. if you give up. So it, it it's same way with with this way of eating. If you give up, where's that going to leave you? You're going to be right back where you were when you started in the pain with the weight coming back on and everything else. And, you know, those people that suffer from depression, I feel so bad. That's all going to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I really didn't have that. uh, Luckily, you know, I have a great support system with my sister. I have three nieces and we all are, are keto. And we hold each other accountable just about every week. We touch base with, you know, the scale and what we've done and all that. But I also have my husband who started keto right along with me about two weeks later. And it's done a world of good for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Being a type one diabetic, like I had said, it has leveled off his blood sugar to where his A1C when he started it in October of 2020 was 7.9. His latest A1C at the end of it was 6.1. Hmm. And he's like, I'd never thought I'd ever see those numbers. And it almost brought him to tears. Yeah. It was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. When I first met this man 20 years ago, his A1C was 16. Hmm. It was so off the charts, crazy. Mm-hmm. He's, he was lucky he was still alive. That was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's come such a long way. But yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Like I like hearing stories about like that. You know, like the whole our journeys with weight loss and healing and all that is is great. But to be able to hear stories about others and you know, like Paul, uh, defense whiz that's in the community as well, being type yes. one as well. Like hearing these stories, saying, okay, well, we know it can't be cured, and there, you know, that's just a, a a reality but it can you know make some drastic changes and and help in a big way to uh to eat like this or, or live a keto lifestyle absolutely yeah i you know i thank my sister all the time for mm-hmm. for <laughs> keeping on us in that chat uh, you mm-hmm. know it's like we j- and i'll tell you with her she's always been in really good shape. She had put on a little weight, Mm -hmm. but when she did this, she said, told her daughter, I'm going to do this with you. And this, she had started in June of 2020. And she said, she told me, she said, I was starting to have a little knee pain. She's a couple years older than me. She'll kill me if she hears this, Mm -hmm. but within weeks, that knee pain was gone. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and she would tell us this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. (laughs) 
knowing what I had already gone through with my knees because prior to all that, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'd sit there and I would just listen and watch what she's, read what she's telling us and all this before I just hit the bullet and started. And, you know, I am so thankful that I did. Mm -hmm. And so appreciative of her that for being so persistent. <laughs> she sure. had got, we had gone to Edo Palooza. 2022 mm. and she had her granddaughter make us up these shirts and it's like her said i'm the persistent sister and my said my sister made me do it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or something to that effect yeah and we wore them and um it's really great because we had met you know being that my sister is debbie i don't know if you've heard nurse cindy's story mm-hmm she has a sister, had a sister, Debbie, unfortunately passed away, who got her started on keto. Mm. So she had heard about us from Rachel from Two Crazy Ketos. And there's two sisters, Cindy and Debbie. Same way. My sister, Debbie, got me started. Her sister, Debbie, got her started. Well, we met her at Keto Palooza in 2022. And that was the most fantastic meeting. You know, we've stayed friends. We we text. We have a, a group text, the three of us. And it's just been great. Hmm. But she made us stand up at Keto Palooza because she when she got up to do her talk. The first she started it out talking about her sister. She said, but I just met two sisters, Cindy and Debbie, who have the same story that I do. Mm. And she had a stand up and everybody's in tears. And it was just <laughs> so heartwarming. It was it was great, but she's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. for sure. So you're you've mentioned bowling uh, a couple of times. Is there any other uh, sort of specific exercising you do? Uh, well, consistently we or? we do belong to Planet Fitness. You okay. know, we need to be more diligent about going. But we were mm -hmm. walking every day until it got too too cold out. Mm -hmm. Um. There for a while, I was doing this walking app that, like, it would go quick pace, slow, you know, slow it down a little bit, quick pace for so many minutes. And uh, I had completed it. It had gotten up to, like, 55 minutes of walking with 30 of that or so at a quick pace. Hmm. And I was doing that every day, you know. It was like, so I need to get back to the gym. But I bought, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. This right here yep. is a rebounder oh, okay. that I just bought. And that's part of my January plans, along with doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs with one of my subscribers who is struggling. I said, I'll do this with you. She said, that's awfully nice of you. And I can't stand it. It's hard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's hard because I've never, with the exception of the one other time I did beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I've never given up my diet Pepsi mm. with the exception of that one month. And I've been successful keeping it in my diet. Mm -hmm. However, to do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs the right way, there are no sweeteners. All right. So that means no keto chow. No chalk zero, mm -hmm. no soda. So <laughs> it's like, ah, but I told her, I said, cause she's really struggling. And I said, all right, let's do that. I'll do this with you. Mm -hmm. She said, okay. And then getting on this thing a few times a week. And I also have, I had bought a, a vibration machine because it says it's good for the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. And after my knee surgeries, I found out I have primary and secondary lymphedema in both of my legs. The only prescription medication I am on is a diuretic to keep the, the edema at bay, the swelling. And I wear compression socks daily hmm. to help prevent any, any swelling and all that that goes with lymphedema. So... There, that's the only thing 
that I take other than vitamins because after the gastric bypass, they tell you, you're going to have to supplement for the rest of your life if you do this because your body cannot absorb the vitamins that you need from food. So you're going to have to supplement. So yeah, there's that. Mm-hmm. But that's the the only prescription medication is that diuretic, which is a, a water pill, basically, mm-hmm. to help with the edema. Right. That's it. And I'm I'm like I'm good. Mm-hmm. I, I feel good. But this vibration machine, I had gotten it, and I I was on it. I had my husband record it, and I put it on on my channel on a video, and somebody commented. Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's going to hurt your hips or something or whatever. I'm like, so I'm going to do it. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) It's not going to hurt my hips. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, that between the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, using the rebounder, using the vibration machine, and getting back into the gym. Mm. That's because winter coming, I don't want to be out there taking a walk and freezing my you know what off. Right. I'll go to the gym and get on the treadmill yeah. and then do some weight training with the other stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Cool. So yeah, you like obviously you're if you're going into uh this sort of January reset uh, mm-hmm. kind of thing with the the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Uh, other than that, though, what would sort of a typical uh, day of eating look like, you know, outside of uh, like a special month like this? Okay. Like yesterday, for instance, we had first meal. I don't even remember. So mm-hmm. I've had to do, usually I do two meals a day. I, I fast until probably one or two in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And then we have our first meal and then we have dinner probably about seven. And, you know, I try not to eat at night. That's my other thing. The mm-hmm. thing I got to stop. However, dinner last night, I had a steak and some carnivore mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. It was two crazy keto's recipe. Right. That was good. Um, most of it is. Oh, we had eggs, or I had eggs and bacon and egg white bread for my second meal. And I had a yogurt in the morning so I could take my antibiotic because mm. I had to take it with food. Right. But yeah, that's that, that was my day yesterday. So they're pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, I, I keep, I do some meal prep. So I, I keep like, Brown to ground beef in the refrigerator. So if I want to make that into taco meat or just use that in an egg scramble. Mm -hmm. Or I made your cheeseburger chaffles one Mm. day. Those were pretty good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Yeah, they it was. Most of our meals are carnivore ish. I would say I do include cheese. Mm -hmm. Um. I know some carnivores do not, but yeah, like one morning for my first meal well, to take my stupid pill, I, I had a keto chow shake mm. and it was, oh my word, I, the way I mixed it, it was, <laughs> it was so mm-hmm. good. It was like an Oreo flavored birthday cake keto chow. Oh yeah. Oh wow. It was good. Hmm. I, I am a true chocoholic. <laughs> Anything chocolate is good for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. The, the one thing I haven't done with keto chow yet is actually make a shake or anything out of it. Like I've... Uh, Jason, I'm telling you, if you, when you do, just put it aside for a couple of days, put it in the refrigerator because mm. those that day or two makes all the difference in the world. Unless right. you want to drink it warm. Mm. Christmas Day. I had every intention of making ham for dinner. Mm-hmm. So what we had out of the freezer. That's what my husband wanted. And I just wasn't hungry enough for that. And I went and I, I got me a packet of chocolate keto chow. And, you know, I mentioned chalk zero. 
I had bought a box of, and there's four in it, of their hot cocoa bombs. Mm. I don't know if you've seen them or, or I've seen heard anybody of them, have. Yeah. Well, they're about the size of a, a little bit smaller than a baseball, I would say. Mm. So I made the keto chow hot. Mm. I used two tablespoons of butter and hot water. And then I put this bomb inside of it mm -hmm. and it opens up and all these little miniature marshmallows come out. <laughs> it is so cool. That was the creamiest, thickest hot chocolate. It was so good, hmm. but it was a healthier version than if I would, would go out and get a cup of hot chocolate somewhere. Sure. This was so good. I was like, yeah. Oh my word. This could be, <laughs> that was my dinner. <laughs> Yeah. Just that that packet of keto chow, as you know, that's a meal replacement. Mm -hmm. That's what I had for dinner. That was it, yeah. and it was it was one delicious dinner. <laughs> yeah, sir. It certainly sounds like it for sure. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll have to to try it. Like I say, only all I have right now is the the butterscotch one. Oh my goodness! The, you should see the, my closet. <laughs> Well, they had to, so much. They had to stop selling it in Canada for a while there, uh, because the the government here is not happy with the amount of potassium they have in it. So you can't even. They buy really it. wouldn't be happy with the salty then, right? No, th that <laughs> that's that's definitely not going to be able to be sold or resold like through a reseller here in Canada. That's sad. No, ah, uh, yeah, it is. Um, but like I say, well, uh, I'm still waiting to try that as well. The, the That's really stuff. good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping. Well, there's some on the way. They, they, they sent me some, but it's been stuck in transit bouncing around the United States for a week and a half now. So. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll get to try it eventually. Maybe next yes. week sometime. So cool. Yeah. Okay, well, I won't take up too much of your time. Uh, on oh, the, it's fine. This morning, but uh, usually uh, I like to ask all the guests, you know, um, to go back to uh, when you first started. Now, obviously, we've all got different stories, but, you know, if someone asks you today, you know, how do I get started? What's the best way to get started? <clears throat> sort of what kind of advice do you get new, give new people now? when they come to you? Well, the funny thing, when I started, there were seven people living in our house. Mm. I was the only one on keto and I did all the cooking mm -hmm. and all the grocery shopping. They paid rent. It was my son and his kids. He paid me rent. So I did the grocery shopping. What they wanted, I got. Because, you know, they were paying for that. And what they wanted to eat, I cooked. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have to eat it. Right. I was so strict when I started. And I would say to someone, first of all, make sure you have your mind set and you're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. After that, just keep it as simple as you can to make it sustainable for you and it will work. Because like my, my lunches when I started were like hard boiled eggs. And maybe some salami rolled up mm -hmm. and some cheese. That would be my lunch. I, it didn't have to be a hot lunch. I was good. And then dinners, whatever protein I wanted, that's what I made. If I mm -hmm. decided I wanted a vegetable, that's what I made. If they wanted potatoes or rice or pasta, I made it for them. Mm -hmm. It was at the table. I was right there. And I loved all of that stuff. But by the time I got started with keto, I, my mind was in this place where I was, the, the determination was huge. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it takes. You know, you really have to be ready. And you have, if, if the things that are in your house are going to bother you, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Because that will be a big deterrence. And, you know, like I have a lot of Chalk Zero in the house. I have a lot of Keto Chow in the house. I know I can avoid those if I really want to, which mm -hmm. I will be in January. 
Um, so, you know, you just have to have the mindset and be ready for it. If you have problems with the stuff, get rid of it. Give it to you, give somebody else, take it to a food pantry, whatever. Somebody that can use it. I ain't saying throw it out. I hear so many people, oh, throw that away. No, mm -hmm. because first of all, it's money. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there's going to be somebody that can use it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and even though they probably shouldn't, you can't change everybody. Right. But when you're ready to change for yourself and you want to better your health, that's that's the biggest key. I have two sons that are in their 40s. My younger son, he has type 2 diabetes. He's a big boy. He had started keto a while back, but he never gave up his regular Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. And I kept on him. I said, if you want to keep it, go to the diet, Mountain Dew. Until you just, you know, wean down on it a little bit because he drinks quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. My older son is very sick. He is on disability. He had ulcerative colitis diagnosis back in 2009, early 2009. Wound up having his colon removed. And now he has Crohn's, which attacks your small intestines. Yeah. And I have sent him video after video on how this can help keep that Crohn's in remission. Mm -hmm. I've sent him people that have Crohn's that are doing this, that put videos out on how it's helped them. I don't even know if he watches them. Mm -hmm. So you can't, I can talk all day about keto and the benefits, and, you know, from what I've experienced and what I've heard. But until you have that mindset, until you are ready to make that change, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But keeping it simple when you are ready is the biggest key to success. Because if you try to read too much into it, you're going to be so screwed up. If you try to be like, oh, and don't listen to everybody else. Because mm -hmm. there's so many influencers, there's so many creators, there's so many people out there on YouTube, out on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere that have their form of keto that's working for them. That's mm -hmm. what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Start simple, find what's working, and keep at it. Because yeah. one person can tell you one thing. Like there's so many people, oh, it's high fat, moderate protein. Other people, high, higher protein, lower fat works for them. You know, finding that sweet spot is like, it takes time. Mm hmm but in the beginning, absolutely keep it as simple as you can. Get your mind in the right place and do what you got to do. Yeah. Because it definitely helps it. It definitely will improve your health in mm -hmm. one way, shape or form. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. The whole mindset piece, I think, is, you know, and I've said that countless times too before is that it's you know if you're not ready if someone's not ready to commit to it it's just going to be another you know tried and fought failed uh, right diet, right and they got to keep in the mind that it's mm -hmm. not a diet it's a whole mm -hmm. way of life right it has to be something that you're ready to commit your life to mm -hmm. but the benefits are so vast and right. so great that it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like, you know, I slip up. I do things I should, I eat things I shouldn't do mm -hmm. on occasion. Like my husband and I went to Frisch's Big Boy mm -hmm. last week or this week, one day. I don't know. But we shared an order of onion rings mm -hmm. that are breaded. Onions right. are carby. The breading is 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. but just once in a while you're going to do something and if you do don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. make it a plan this is what you're going to do and then you just get right back on track and push yourself right there's so many people in this community that beat themselves up if they go off the rails mm -hmm. 
And there's so many people that say, oh, because it's a birthday or a Christmas or something, I will definitely go off plan. It's not necessary. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to go all oh, total. One, one little thing is one thing. But when you go totally off kilter, mm-hmm. it takes days to get back in ketosis, to get back to the fat burning stage. It takes days for that one meal to put you back on track. Sure. So it, it's, you know, that that's the biggest thing is when you're into this and you're in that fat burning stage and you have a cheat day or a cheat meal or whatever you want to call it, it just takes so long to get your body back to where you were. Mm-hmm. That you have to ask yourself, was this really worth it? Because mm-hmm. you worked so hard to get there. You know, like I said, right. I'm not perfect. I've done the work, though. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm pretty much maintaining. Right. And in the beginning, you got to, you just have to be so diligent. Mm-hmm. But you have to be ready. Yeah. 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 I, I think I've, and I've, seen quite a few times too where it i think it almost takes that you know if someone's been fairly consistent for a few months a year Mm -hmm. whatever a lot of times it's after that first six months to a year where someone will you know go off plan for that meal or for that day Mm -hmm. um and then they've they experience exactly what you're you're saying here is that it's You know, some people don't have to go way off the rails to just feel like complete garbage afterwards, you know, but I almost think for some people, it takes that experience to show them that, you know, this is, we do this to feel good, you know, like, and and we don't going off plan, like really bad. If you can stop it and get back on plan, you know, I think that kind of experience can help people realize that they need to be a little more conscious of what they're doing uh, when they do want to, you know, indulge in things that aren't necessarily part of the plan. Right. I'll give you a good example of this. My husband and I, we moved from New Hampshire, New Hampshire to Kentucky Mm -hmm. in October of 21. We went to this one steakhouse that we hadn't been to before. And we sit down and they bring the rolls to the table. And oh, my word, did they look good. Mm -hmm. So I ate one. And I had my steak. I was fine. I didn't feel bad. But I got up my my app and Mm -hmm. I keyed in that roll. Now, before this, I was trying to stay 20 carbs or less, maybe 30 or 40 since I've lost the weight and in this maintenance mode. I wasn't then. I was still trying to stay within 20 carbs unless I, you know, wanted something and I knew I was going right back on track. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind that that one roll was 56 carbs. Mm -hmm. Now, I was a true bread lover. So that was like, and it was so good. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. Now, Remember earlier I said if I eat a lot of carby food, I get hypoglycemic episodes. Mm -hmm. That'll still happen if I can't offset it with enough protein. And that's how it was back then. I had to have quite a bit of protein if I wanted to eat anything carby. Mm -hmm. So it didn't bother me because that protein would offset that. Mm -hmm. The next time we went to the same restaurant, my brain was stupid remembered how good those rolls were and I ate two of them Mm. I'm thinking but I'm gonna have a chicken salad with it well not enough protein when you get a salad right unless you ask for extra protein on your salad Mm -hmm. and and when I do get a big salad I never eat it all I pick out the protein mostly first I make sure I eat all that and there's like I said there's not much there so I was sick. My blood sugars dropped like that. Yeah. 
after that. And I'm like, all right. So now we go there everywhere we go. Red Lobster has those great Cheddar Bay biscuits. Mm -hmm. Do not bring anything to the table. Right. Just don't give them to somebody else. Whatever you got to do, don't bring the bread to the table. Mm -hmm. so everywhere we go, that's what we do. You know, it, it's. Um, yeah, that was that was probably the stupidest thing. After I'd already seen their 56 carbs and to eat two of them the next time, that's 112 carbs right off the bat. Mm -hmm. What the heck did I just do that I'm going to have to work 10 times harder to get back on, <laughs> to get back to where I was? Yeah. But like I said, nobody's perfect. Yeah. Everybody messes up. It's mm -hmm. how you how you follow through after that. Absolutely. You know, there's so many people that would just give up and say, I already screwed it up. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. And go for a week at a time just messing up. Mm -hmm. And that is, there comes the weight. <clears throat> there comes the weight. There comes the pain. Because yeah. now you've got inflammation back and all that. And it's just not worth that. To me, anyway, it's not worth that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that one. Like, that's, you know, I, my personal, the way I have to, to treat it is to just not do any of that because I have a real bad habit of, you know, at this point, I could probably get away with having that full on, you know, burger and fries meal. I could probably do it and I'd feel fine which is the problem because then I would be like, Oh, well, you know, that didn't really affect me. So maybe I could do it again in a month or, and then that turns into every two weeks and just, you know, before I know it, everything's, you know, gone right back to, to where it was before. So it, yeah. you know, that's why I've realized for myself personally, at least I have to just give it all up and, you know, it sucks sometimes, but you know, I've learned to, to, to accept it. And that's, that's just the way I live. But again, I think it, it's one of those things where having those off plan meals can be really beneficial for a lot of people as well too. more in a mental side of things necessarily right. than, a, than a physiological, but it, it's, yeah, everybody like you've, we've, you've said before, everybody has to figure out what works for you, you know, what's my right. diet or what's my lifestyle, what's your lifestyle. And, you know, we may all sort of start roughly in the same spot or place with the same motivations mm -hmm. over time. It's just going to uh, transition into what works for you. And, you know, that's all you can really do. And that's why I like to do these interviews is because, you know, my goal with them is when, someone asks me, okay, well, how do I start and where should I start? Well, I just point them to these interviews because with, you know, 20, 30 different stories, you're always going to get something that will resonate with that person, right? Because right. We, we, we've all got different stories. Like I say, we, we, there's similar parts to all of them, but you know, they're, they're yeah, the yo-yo dieting, the, uh, yeah. The main goal when you start is, oh, I got to lose this weight. And mm -hmm. then you realize all the health benefits that came along and the weight was just a, a side bonus. Mm -hmm. That was like, that was the eye opener. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I'm after 50 years of being on blood pressure medicine, I'm not anymore. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and, and seeing my husband and like I said, his A1C and his blood sugar is leveling off. He's been diabetic since he was two years old. Mm -hmm. You know, he's 61 years old now and he's in better shape than he, he, he's always been in decent shape. You know, he, he did have some weight loss. That, okay. Whatever. But his health is so much better overall. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Holy man, look what this has done to this man. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just fantastic. So, and yeah, it, it, and for me, the, the, uh, the back pain is gone. The bursitis is gone. You know, there's so many just overall benefits for mm -hmm. so many people. It's hard to just turn your back on this mm -hmm. and not give it a try. Yeah. It's hard. It, to me, it would be. Yeah. You know, well, 
Yeah. I think it all comes back to that, that whole uh, mentality part though. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's something has to switch from all oh, this would be nice to do that to, you know, I have to do this. Like I have right. to make these changes. Right. Like it's until, you know, I was the same way when I was younger, I smoked cigarettes for 15 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it got to the point where, you know, I tried quitting a couple of times, but it wasn't, wasn't until I was like, I'm done with this. And my, like, I had to say to myself, well, I have to quit this. That's the only way I was able to quit. And it was the same with this. It's like, find out, figure out what it is that's going to drive you forward and keep that in the back of your mind or even on sticky notes around your house. Why are you doing this? You know, right. so that, so that, that big when, why that everybody talks about. Yeah. So when you start questioning yourself saying, well, why am I putting myself through this? Well, go back to that and draw the, the motivation from that. Right. It, it's, it's just so, I, you know, I get it. There's a lot to give up mm -hmm. when you start this. There's a lot and it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But I ask people when they say this, what's more important to you? Those foods or your health? Mm -hmm. What's the most important thing to you? You know, foods mm -hmm. are just fit. Yeah. Your health should come before anything. Yeah, it should. But I think the sad part is that there is a vast majority of people that the food comes first, mm -hmm. you know, still like a lot of people, you know, I've, and I'm sure you've run into it where, you know, you can talk about keto for a half an hour until you say, well, you need to give up like bread and pasta. And then it's just See ya. I'm oh, I can't do that. No yeah. way. I love no. potatoes. I said, so yeah. did I. Yeah. I love bread. So did mm -hmm. I. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we have yeah. we have some neighbors. When we first moved in here, there was a husband and wife that we had met. We were walking around and they invited us in and we were talking. And we were talking about keto. They were both type 2 diabetic. Hmm. And laying around their house with Reese cups and all this chocolate stuff. And, oh, but we mm -hmm. love this stuff. I said, exactly. And I mm -hmm. get it. However, you could get rid of that. You can reverse your type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. if you try hard. You could get off of the medications that have side effects and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward about a year and a half. They have both died of cancer. Mm. And it's so sad. It was like he went and within months she went. Right. She was she was diagnosed with cancer before he was. And then he was diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus, I think. Mm. And he went pretty quick considering. Mm -hmm. It was just sad. And, you know, we have another set of neighbors that are on so many medications and they inquired about us and what we were doing. And so we told him about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he says, I'm going to do this. I'm doing this. Well, I don't know if you personally have experienced, but I know when, when I lost weight, the first place I noticed is in my face. Mm hmm. And it's pretty typical. That's the first thing that people are going to notice. Yeah. I wasn't noticing any changes in him, but he kept swearing he was doing it. Mm. His wife and I went out one day just for a couple hours. And she says, he cheats all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, she has no part of it because she's not crazy about meat mm. in general. She said, I can't do this stuff, da -da -da, whatever. So he keeps putting on this false thing that he's doing this keto. Mm -hmm. And we, Brian and I, my husband, we just sit there and, and just laugh about it away. From it. Mm. And I mean, it's sad because he is, does have so much wrong with him, but we all went out to eat one day at a steakhouse mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to laugh at him and I had to say something because it was crazy. He, we, they brought bread he pushed it over to his wife because he knew she was going to eat some. He didn't touch it. Then he orders his steak 
with a baked potato. Mm -hmm. And he got a salad. <laughs> they bring the salad, it has croutons on it. He's picking off the croutons. And I'm <laughs> like, those little croutons aren't going to do as much damage as that baked potato is going to do. Right. So I looked at him. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> and he said, he says, I'm going to give these to her. I said, what difference does it make? You ordered a baked potato. Yeah. He said, well, every little bit helps. I'm like, God. Yeah. So it was, it was like Brian and I, we just, that was the point. We're just, that's it. No more. We're not going to discuss this anymore with them. It's like, nope, not happening. Yeah. But, you know, and then we've come across people like when we go out that, and I, like I said, I talk about it all the time because I know how much good it's done. Mm -hmm. And there are those people that look so interested. Oh, I need to try this. My doctor's office is, like, mm -hmm. you know, that sounds great. Oh, but then there's those, I can't give that up. Mm -hmm. I said, I didn't think I could either. Yeah. I said, but after a while, I figured out my health is a lot more important to me than those French fries or that spaghetti or the breads that I love so much. Mm -hmm. This is way more important. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, it's ironic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like can't change people. Can't. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, I think all you can really do is lead by example, and you know, and hope that people see the benefits. And and again, I think one of the, the the parts, unfortunately, and it's we've all experienced it, is that everybody sees the outside benefits, like the the weight loss and all that. Nobody mm -hmm. sees the like the benefits inside, like the, 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 the pain going away and the inflammation going away and just how good you feel, uh, inside. Right. And I think if people understood that part of it a little bit more, it might be easier to convince them to give it a try, you know, cause everybody sees just the weight loss piece. Oh, th this guy next door to us. Hmm. I mean, I had talked about Dr. Barry. I gave him videos to watch mm -hmm. when he wanted to. He said he wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> My doctor even said that one day. I took, I have, well, I don't go to that doctor anymore, but I have um, Dr. Barry's Common Sense Labs book. I mm. took it with me to my appointment. I said, I would like this and this and this and this done as well as whatever, you, you know, the ones you're ordering. Right. Well, you don't need those. Who says you need those? Mm -hmm. And he says, he doesn't know what he's think, what he's talking about. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> yeah. he has reasonings written down in this book. Why you should have this lab work done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't need that. Yeah. And like, one was a fasting insulin. Dr. Barry talks about that a lot. Mm -hmm. I asked my doctor to order that. He refused. Mm -hmm. He said, if your fasting glucose and your A1C come back messed up, then I will order you a fasting insulin. Mm -hmm. So he tried to explain himself. And I just, you know, whatever. If I really want it done, I know how to order it myself. So. Right. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it is kind of crazy for sure. But all we can do is, you know, do what's best for us at the end of the day. So That's right. Try to educate our doctors. Yep, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're coming up on an hour here. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to. No, I yeah. think that's about it. Thank you so yeah. much, Jason. Yeah, no problem. It's been great. Okay. Well, let me end this recording here if you want to hang on a sec.